Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today we are going to talk about bottle aging versus um, bulk aging, and we'll also talk about the pros and cons of each one. So let's get started. So the main difference that we know between bulk aging and bottle aging is the uh, quantity of which the liquid is aging. And um, so, for example, if I'm going to bulk age something, I'm going to leave it in its container, main container, for X amount of time, however long you want to age it for. For example, I have some of my bottles up here. These are bulk aging because they are uh, their own entity mead in one place. So my apple pie mead here that I have, it is bulk aging currently, and um, you know that's that. Then there's the other side of the world, which is bottle aging, which is where you are taking your you know single entity and you're putting it into singular bottles. Now some of you are like, well, this is obvious, and it is. It is very obvious. But let's talk about the pros and cons of each one. So this is like a, a singular bottle that is aging currently. This is one of my mango meads, um, and I have found that the the pros. Um, I'll try and do pros of each side. The pros of bulk aging are you have a consistent flavor throughout the entire um, mead, wine, beer, whatever, because it is all aging in the same fashion with the same amount of air, same amount of whatever on top. Um, and that's nice because you have a consistent flavor going out there. And um, I most of, most of the time try to bulk age as much as I can. However, I have found as I've been making more brews over time, um, the bottle aging is, is also pretty consistent and uh, it, it yields some similar results. The, the pros of bottle aging would be that you are able to store them a little better. For example, this is hard to store into like my cupboards because these, these bottles, because they're so tall, it just doesn't work. But um, all above here, I don't know if you've ever seen this, all above here is my storage. So I'm able to store all of my single bottles as they age um, in there, which is really nice because I don't have to worry about uh, conserving space as much. So that's kind of a pro of that. Uh, as far as flavor difference between bulk aging and bottle aging, if you drink the alcohol pretty quick after you are, if you fermented and whatever in the, um, in the singular big bottle, um, you're not gonna get too much of a flavor difference. If you wait a year or two, a bottle might be different from a different bottle. For example, let's say I had, and I have multiple multiple bottles of my mango mead. Let's say that I left these, uh, do I have one in here? Uh, yes, let's say that I left these two bottles in different places. You know, I took one and I left it uh, even in my, my bedroom and I left this one in here. And I left it for two years. There's a great chance that because of temperature, because of sunlight, because of anything like that, that there could be a different flavor profile in these singular bottles. Now, um, most of the time you don't run into the issue because when you store bottles, you want to store them in dark places. Um, and so like, you know, that's, a lot of people are like, well, that's not good. Um, so you're gonna, you're gonna get a consistent enough flavor, but there will be minor differences from bottle to bottle. And that's where bottle aging can, can start to go into the cons category. It, are you affecting your flavors? Um, so, you know, that's, kind of kind of hard to deal with it's not exactly a perfect science because it all depends on location 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 you know um, the cons of bottle or excuse me bulk aging are you are taking up so much space um, which if you don't have a lot like I I'm fortunate I have quite a bit of space but I'm always needing more because I'm making more projects um, if I'm trying to bulk age for example Let's see, looking down here, I have a big old six gallon carboy. I would try and lift it up, but it's super heavy. I have that big old six gallon carboy, and that thing, um, you know, I could bulk age in that, and it'd be great. However, it takes up so much space, which means that I'm not only um, using an extra carboy, not only using that six gallon carboy to hold something, and you know, I can't use it for anything else, um, but it's just taking up all that space. And so I, I generally find that as a con of bulk aging you don't want to lose the space that you need to continue to brew. Um, the, there are pros and cons, like obviously pros and cons to both. I am a big fan, um, depending on the mead, of bottle aging because I feel like I leave a pretty consistent 
room temperature, a pretty consistent uh, area for my bottles to age, and also allows me to continue to make more things. I have about a grand total of, uh, I think, 15 one gallon carboys. If I tried to bulk age everything I do in one gallon carboys, I would not be able to continue to brew. In fact, I'm, you know, I'm having to constantly go ahead and, and put things in bottles, even if they're younger than I would like, um, to try and continue to brew. Now let's talk about the other side of things, which is um, when you are bottling uh, and, and dealing with that, how long do, does bottle aging versus bulk aging last? So in my opinion, I think you can, depending on how much air is on top of your mead or liquid, you can probably bulk age for as long as you possibly want, which is really nice um, because you're leaving this consistent product right there. The bottle aging becomes a little different and it's very different for the type of bottle you use. So let's say for example, I have, these are two different uh, alcohols, but I have a beer bottle that I want to use. When I bottle age in a beer bottle and use a cap, um, you need to make sure that you have a, a nice quality oxygen like storing cap. You don't want to cap something with um, a cheap cap because over time, um, if it lets oxygen out, that liquid kind of becomes ruined and you don't want to deal with that. How long can you age in a beer bottle? Um, this is kind of an area of contention because some people would say you can go long time, two, three years. Uh, other people might say that you can only do it for a year. Um, I'm kind of that, that mindset. I try to let my beer bottle things at max age for a year to a year and a half and I'm hoping that I've sealed it well. The wine bottle side using corks is different. First of all, I'm a big fan of synthetic corks, which uh, they're just easier to store and handle because you don't have to store things on the side. When you use real corks, you have to make sure that the cork actually stays, um, oh, there's a lot of sediment in this, uh, actually stays uh, like moist, which synthetic corks don't have to deal with. The uh, um, corking actually lets mead stay in the bottle longer. So you could age a corked mead if it, um, you know, if it didn't have problems in the beginning uh, for a long time, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, depending on how well you store it. There are some other sides of that. Um, if you want to preserve a liquid for longer, we um, generally start to use things like potassium metabisulfite, which is a agent that allows for it to be aged longer. Um, and you see that in some foods, you see that in some other things. And some people are proponents of that, um, some people are not. Again, it's the side of the fence you want to be on. I'm, I'm not going to say there's a right side or not. Um, I often, I kind of go back and forth. Sometimes I'll use metabisulfite, sometimes I don't. Depends on how quickly I think I'll uh, give away the mead or drink it myself. Um, so I use it more often than not though. The main difference between bulk and bottle aging is just how much liquid are you aging um, in a singular vessel. And I like bottle aging where, where I'm at in life. If I had a big old place where I could just leave bulk aging bottles and never have to worry about um, turnover of, okay, I need this carboy for something else, I would bulk age everything. It'd be awesome. Um, the only thing is it just takes a lot of time. And you can't really access the bottles as easily. You can, of course, go and get a little flavor or a little taste of it. But with um, bottle aging, you can say, all right, well, it's been um, a year since I bottled this. I want to go ahead and taste it. Go grab a bottle, open it up, and go for it. If you're bulk aging, you can do the same thing. You just have to have some sort of vessel to you know, pull out and then put some in a cup, whatever. Uh, I, I'll let you decide which side you want to be on. Um, if you want to be more of a bulk ager or a bottle ager, I would love to know what you think down below because um, while I, I think my opinions, um, I think what I'm saying is valid, uh, I would love to hear your opinions as well, what you think is better, bottle aging versus bulk aging. Um, this is a topic I wanted to discuss because I think it's important that we all know the difference and uh, kind of decide which side you want to be on and, um, and how you want to use it. You can use both well, um, it just depends on you know what you do with it. So. Thank you for watching. Uh, let me know what you think down below. Look at the, the uh, description for some links to support the channel, um, as well as just you know do the basic thing of subscribe and, and uh, like the video because that lets me know what you think. Uh, I will be giving or continue to do these videos. Um, I love getting to not only entertain but educate. 
as much as I can. I'm by no means a perfect mead maker, so please do not assume that I am <laughs> running and saying my way is the highway. Uh, again, this is there's so many different ways you can age meads and so many different opinions. Um, I will not cl ever claim to be the one and uh, one and only opinion. So check out those links. Make sure you subscribe for more. Um, I really hope you guys have enjoyed this, and uh, I hope to see you in another video. So with that, cheers.